Okay, so uh, welcome everyone. Um, I'm uh, Damon Scott, as my slide uh, says, Chief Executive of uh, Dumbartia Chamber of Commerce. Um, so welcome to uh, the latest in our Together for Business uh, events. Um, and uh, uh, again, I'll just say a, a few quick words um, uh, about Together for Business for those uh, that may, may not have uh, heard, heard me speak about it. So um, T Together for Business was set up in response to the, the crisis that we find ourselves in. It was very much designed to continue the work that the, the, the Chamber does in, in supporting and connecting businesses. And obviously at the moment we, we felt it was even more important to keep that connection and support going uh, to help businesses through this. Um, originally uh, we were doing a lot of uh, support through HR, grants, finance. Uh, we we'll cert certainly still continue to do some of that, but the um, uh, kind of the agenda has, has changed a little bit to obviously now that we're looking at restrictions being limited, uh, lifted, uh, and, and we're looking at the re-emerging re economy. So this uh, is the, the latest in our uh, series of events looking at the re-emerging economy and trying to help businesses to think about different areas they can uh, improve and prepare themselves to, to be stronger uh, when, they, when they come out of, of this. Because I think as I've maybe put in some of the blurb, you know, the, the businesses that invest in, 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 in positioning themselves and, and, and uh, you know, coming out of this uh, best are going to be the, the, the ones that are strongest and, and most sustainable. So um, a few quick uh, things to mention but in terms of housekeeping before we start. I think uh, Philip's uh, 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 our producer for the day and uh, he's um, keeping an eye on, 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 on things like the, the chat function. So if you, you click on your menu bar, there's a chat function to put in any comments or uh, questions. Um, the, uh, there's also, uh, you, you can use the... Um, uh, when we come to question and answers, there's a, a hands up uh, icon and certainly we'll be allowing people to put their hands up physically as well, try and keep an eye on the the, uh, the screen there. Uh, what we'll do, we'll keep everyone muted until we come to the um, question and answer. Um, and I guess now, uh, it, without further ado, it's being, I think uh, Philip's mentioned it's being recorded. So uh, just so you know, we, we post these up to the website as a, a resource for people to, uh, either people who are in attendance or those who couldn't make it to, to use as a, a reference and a learning uh, resource. So um, the social media, uh, I won't uh, sort of uh, steal in any thunder, but certainly it's a really important uh, element uh, as um, we've um, been isolated and uh, not in the office and, and, and we've lacked that physical uh, uh, interaction so it's become even more important uh, which is a, a key part of what this uh, session is about. We've, there's two, two parts to it we've got uh, Fenella Taylor from Fenella Taylor PR who's given us going to give us a, a bit of an insight into the importance at this particular time and the opportunities and an introduction to uh, you know what, what sort of things that we should be thinking about. I'll say a bit more at the end I think we'd like to follow up this with this session with some specifics to help businesses look at uh, specific areas um, but this is a, a sort of fairly broad overview uh, to try and get businesses thinking in, in, in the right way uh, about their uh, digital presence and, and particularly using social media so um, I think without further ado I'll, I'll pass over to uh, Fenella who uh, runs her own PR agency in, in our area she's actually in the, in the fortunate position to be living in Gartahan so uh, if there's any uh, unfortunately they've not got super fast Wi-Fi so um, we'll, we'll have to be forgiven if there's any sort of wee outages we'll just uh, deal with that as as they come up and I'll uh, I don't think we should uh, uh, fingers crossed have, have too much but we'll we'll deal with that if that happens so just just bear in mind in these unusual circumstances so um we'll start with Fenella if I could uh get her uh get you to share your screen Fenella and do a do we introduction Hi. um hello everyone uh, so I'm Fenella um Taylor and um very welcome you onto this webinar this afternoon um, I started Fenella Taylor PR um, uh, about 25 years ago, um, I, as, as Damon has said, in Gata Hahn. Um, I've been doing, um, I've been in PR for a long, lot longer than that, but I have been doing, I do consumer and trade PR, plus a bit of events, 
Um, very varied, a lot of clients has been interiors lot like Kitchens International, uh, Life Kitchen, Scope, Bathroom, CP Heart. Um, I've done a bit of food and drink, uh, Demi John, um, New Covent Garden Soup Company. I've done, I do Scotland's trade fair, Scotland's speciality food show. So it's very varied, a lot of clients. Um, and the mission at, at Fenella Taylor PR is to basically offer bespoke PR campaign, very personalized, hands-on approach. Um, one of the biggest things since I began in PR is that social media is now one of the key elements. It wasn't there when I started. And it's now one of the biggest key elements of, of PR. So that's just a little bit of a background to who I am and where I've come from. Um, but biggest thing, why, why should you be doing social media now? Um, one of the things at this point is that as every company is struggling and you know they're basically just trying to stay afloat, pay their employees and keep going, the common mistake is that people cut marketing. It's an easy one to cut, cut your marketing budget, stop doing your social media, stop doing your PR, because it, it's seen as an extra expense. Now we believe that's, that's wrong, don't do that. Um, partly because you need to be on the front foot when we come out of this, this awful crisis. Um, and if you, are, if you haven't done anything like that, people don't know you're about and what you're, what you're doing. Um, in terms of social media, before uh, March, there was everybody, there was a lot of noise going on on social media, a lot of people posting. Um, since the, the crisis, that has, there's been a lot of that's dropped off because people have stopped their marketing. And so it's important that you fill that void and create some noise. There is an, there is an emptiness there. There are more people on social media. There's about 50% higher usage on social media than there was before the lockdown. So the, you've got an opportunity here to actually be getting your brand out there when others aren't doing it. Um, we'll very much uh, remember those companies who are there for them as well at the moment. People are very into being a lot more caring and a lot more thinking about others at the moment. So um, they, and the ones who do that, the ones that go that extra mile, maybe they, they do something special. They're very inspirational um, but social media posts. Maybe they're doing extra deliveries. Maybe they're just doing something that, that little bit extra for them. Um, people will remember them. And equally, we're gonna remember those who aren't, who don't do it. We've all heard about the, the airlines that aren't offering refunds. Um, and we're all going to remember those, but the ones that aren't doing it well will be will be remembered and people will stop shopping from them, using them, um, engaging with them. So this is a very, very important time. It's unprecedented to be able to, to make a mark out there. Um, so most importantly, you must keep your brand alive and, and really keep it there. So it's at the front of people's minds and communication is the way to do that. So where do we begin? Well, I would suggest we go back to the basics. We start initially by developing a social media strategy um, it, you can if you just go headlong into it you will it'll all become very it won't be joined up so you must do a strategy what what do you want to do what is it that you're wanting to gain from social media what, what, what are your aims um, and make that into a strategy as to what you want and what your objectives are prepare well at the beginning will give you results at the end and remember that not one size fits all um, so, you know, what one company is doing, it might not be what you're doing. The messages, are your messages still the same as they were pre-March or different? Probably I would say they're different because you've got to amend them into this new time. We're all, we're all in a different way of business. So you've got to uh, do a, think of your messages and then refine them. Identify your target market. That's something that a lot of people just think, oh, I, I have a product and I want to get it out. So I'll put it up on social media and I shout, it's going out to millions. Maybe you need to identify who you want to see, who wants to see this. You can do that very easily by doing um, promoted posts or advertising on social media, but you can also do this without that. There are ways of refining it and just making it going out to your, to the people that you want to see it. And they, you need to know what it is you're trying to get out of it and use this time to adapt. Um, you can do something a bit different. Maybe, you know, maybe you've got to change things the way you did it before. Don't just go back into what you did before. Maybe change and see what it is. Um, now, I'm sure you're all very well aware of all the, the social media platforms, but I just wanted to pick out um, the five key ones. Um, the top two, Facebook and, and Instagram, now they're very much consumer led. Um, so they're very much engaging with straight consumers. LinkedIn is very much business to business. Um, it's not just recruitment, it's business to business. Twitter is more business and YouTube is video. But those are the, the key five key ones. 
Um, social media share, this is just to give you a rough idea worldwide what social media share is. Facebook way out in front, um, always has been. Um, and so yeah, that's, uh, 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 that's in millions. So yeah, WhatsApp, I'm just gonna mention that very briefly, purely because that's very good for internal communication. I mean, WhatsApp groups for sales teams, for little groups within your company, um, that is very useful, but I wouldn't necessarily use it massively for external um, social media at the moment. YouTube, obviously videos. Um, Instagram, that's obviously very pictorial, consumer-led. TikTok and Snapchat, much younger, only if you're really going with a younger audience, not so relevant if it's an older audience. Um, LinkedIn, as I said, business to business. Twitter and Pinterest, and Pinterest for, um, photo, again, for photo things, photo as well. Right, what are the benefits of social media? Um, one of the things is it's very much in the moment. It's quick, it's direct, it's immediate, it's there. You can post in two minutes, you can put something up. You equally, you can edit it and you can take it back down if it, if it bombs, if it's not good. So it's a very, it's a very immediate and very fast moving thing. Um, it builds brand loyalty. It, it, it creates a face to your brand, to your company, to your organization, whatever it is you are, it's a face. You're out there, you've got different, looking at different things. Um, it can, it's very cost effective, it's free, unless you're actually engaging somebody to do it or you're, or you're boosting it, it's, it's very cost effective. And um, it's a very good way of engaging with, with customers. Um, you, can, you can have chats on, on social media with customers and it's a good way of, of it's a separate tool for customer service. Um, I'd also just like to mention a bit about crisis management at this point. I don't know whether any, any of you have ever had um, terrible people come onto and, and slander your company or your products on social media. Now, in that sense, don't ever just stay silent. The best thing is get them off social media as quickly as possible. Reply and take them off and chat to them in a normal forum by email or by, by phone. But there is, it is useful for that as well. Um, and it builds your business profile. It's um, very much, it can, it can build you know, what you are, who you are, and it attracts new customers. So it, it, that's what all the benefits are there for. So how do we go about it? Right, it's, it's very alive. And it, as I say, it's very alive and, and immediate. And I'm just going to go through some of the things about what you should do you know, to, on actually engaging with social media. So first of all, frequency of posting. I would say um, maximum five times a week. Don't overload with three posts a day. People will get bored. Um, and they'll see too much and they'll switch off from you. Equally, don't do too little. So three to five posts a week. Um, and keep that content fresh. Keep it um, new and interesting. We all don't, you know what it's like reading paper or, or looking at social media. Anything that's boring, you switch off, you don't read. So it's got to be really interesting and fresh. Think about it with fresh eyes and maybe even test it on, on other people and say, you know, do you, is, that, is that interesting? And don't do it sales orientated. As is suggested in the name, social media is social. It's, it's not there as a straight sales tool. You can do e-commerce on it, but it is, it's more as a social thing. And therefore you want to, you're just raising awareness. You're, you're bringing your customers in and you're attracting them in, you're winding them in as it were. And the, keep that very short and snappy and relevant. And, and in this, especially at the moment, make sure you're very sensitive. Um, there are times that, you know, you, you, you probably be much more sensitive nowadays than we would have been three months ago. So be, be sensitive um, and start a conversation. Um, keep, you know, so that's the way of it, it sort of, I say bringing everyone in um, and keeping your brand message alive. We would say um, uh, advocate using videos a lot. Um, make sure that they're only maximum 30 seconds, better to be 10 seconds in my eyes, but um, short, sharp, neat and, and slick. Don't, you know, it doesn't need to be long preambles or anything. Just make them interesting. People are very quick on social media. They only look at things very short time. So you want to have that very short. Um, Engage with customers if they like or they comment or they react to posts. Uh, comment back to them, thank them, maybe ask a question. What do they want? Keep keep them engaged so that they say, oh gosh, they actually care about me. They're talking to me direct. You do a direct talking, and and be creative. You can you can do interesting things on it, and and be creative. Be be, be daring, um, and take new risks. And it's it's a time at the moment where you probably can take risks. If a, if a post bombs, just delete it or or move on. It's fine. You can do that. Um, and monitor and analyze your posts by working out which ones do well and which ones don't do well. If you go into um, 
the insights in Facebook or Instagram or analytics and Twitter, you can see which are, are doing well, which have good reach, which have good engagement. And if particular a pattern of them are good, then carry on doing some more of those, the ones that don't do well, stop doing them. You can, and that's the, that's the easiest way of doing it and a very quick way of doing it. Um, always check your, your competitors. What are they up to um, and what are they doing? Um, uh, another thing to do is tag companies, tag them and maybe get them to share on what you're doing. You know, tag who's the first person who wants to, to, to share this on or, or want, you want to show this to somebody. Uh, try different posts and see what works um, and what works for you. It's all trial, trial or error. Um, and also we would say possibly do some advertising. It can be very cheap. You can do a £10 boost of a post to attract and it'll get a much wider audience and that can be very targeted. So, you know, you don't need to be spending hundreds of pounds, just a 10 pounds here, 20, 50, that, that will work as well. So how do we achieve these results? First of all, good quality photographs. I know you can't get a photographer in at the moment, but um, use good quality photographs. Good iPhones will take good photographs, but make sure the background is good. Don't go and make it far too dark. Make it sure everyone looks in it. It's not somebody running behind suddenly. Just look at what your photographs are and use them. Ask questions and engage your target market. Maybe you put up a post with four different, four different things, like four different kitchens, and says, which one um, is your favorite? Which, what colors do you like? Um, what, maybe do a little quiz or something, you know, find, the, find something in the photographs. Engage them at as many times as possible. And keep changing it so it's, it's always fresh and it's new. Um, as we said before, tag relevant people. Always tag, it means they will probably share on. So it's then being seen by a whole wider audience. Um, be heard and be seen, be out there. Be out there all the time so that people are remembering, oh yeah, I've seen that company again and again and again. Um, maybe you try a bit of e-commerce. You can do shop now on, on Facebook and on Instagram. Use that, do that a bit if that works for you. Try it, do a bit of trial and error. Most of all, be brave. Um, it, it's, it's all, it, what, what works for one company won't work necessarily for the rest. So just try it, try and get out there. Um, here are just a few examples of companies that have uh, uh, been doing it well. Um, starting off here with uh, Kitchen International, that happens to be one of my clients, but um, now we, they, their designers are all on furlough at the moment. So they're not out um, designing kitchens, they can't install. So they've done, this is one of their design inspirations. It is waiting, uh, a design waiting to go out. So we put this up as a design inspiration. Um, we got 117 reactions from it. Um, and a lot of people were comment, they were tagging partners and saying, oh, I like this banqueting seating, or I like the lighting, or, or doesn't this, the colors work well, or the shades or whatever. And, and that's really well. So that, that has produced very, very good results. And then we say, well, you know, come in and see that in the showroom, as soon as our showroom's open. Um, a lot of pubs and uh, restaurants are doing offering takeaways. This is very good. This is the old mill in Cologne. Um, they put this up within an hour. They'd had four comments and two shares. So that worked, you know, worked very well. It's just a, it's, it's doing something a little bit different. Um, the Green Gallery and the Clive have been doing great things at um, Facebook Live events on a 5 p.m. on a Saturday. Becky Walker, the owner, takes people around, talks about the paintings, um, in the gallery, interviews artists, and in one Facebook Live event, you managed to sell five paintings. So it really worked. It, it brought the showroom to the people into people's houses. You bring what you have into somebody's house. Uh, Nick Nen down here, the chef, who has a cook school and a restaurant, he's been doing um, cookery demos at home. And I mean, you know, there we go. He's got 128 likes on that one post because he's got a very huge following. But it's he, he's engaging people. He's keeping his brand alive. Um, the, this one, this one I quite liked was from Percy Gin. They're doing a little bit of shopping. They've made these masks and they're shopping them and uh, selling them, sorry. Um, and within two hours, they got 58 comments and 25 shares. So that shows you how quickly something a little bit of fun. It's not selling gin, but it's something a little bit of different. Um, right, looking ahead. What should we do? How do we do it? So start off immediately. We've got to look at the rest of 2020. This plan is going to be very changeable. It's going to change from week, day to day, week to week, month to month. But make a plan of what you want to do, how you want to achieve it. Um, then look at the rest of 20, for going ahead beyond 2021. What's, what is it going to be as we go further on? How are you wanting to do to look at you uh, and market your company? Um, training. This is a really good time to use training. Um, if your staff are furloughed, 
um, or you yourself furloughed, use that time wisely. Get, do training. There are so much online training, webinars like these or other skills toolkit, My World of Work. A lot of it's free. Use it, train, and make sure that your furloughed staff are training as well. Get prepared, be ready so that you're on the front foot. If you're not able to do anything now in selling terms, be ready to be out there. So as soon as your shop can open, you're ready with everything better and, and brighter than you were. Take this chance to update your website as well. Uh, it's to, even if it's just a tweaking photographs, website designers, I know are absolutely overwhelmed, but this is one time when you can really get your website looking great. And maybe it's a time, you know, you can, you have to change the way your company works, what you're selling and that sort of thing. Um, and most of all, communicate, get out there and communicate. Now, see this, this whole crisis as an opportunity rather than a disaster. It's a time when you can evaluate your business um, and see, it, it say, are you doing the right things? Are you selling the right things? Have you got the right people? Are you efficient as you can be? Using the right messages? Or do you need to reinvent? Should you be doing extra training, as I mentioned before? Should you, are your core values right? Do you need to, to relook at the whole way you're going ahead? This is the opportunity, use this as a complete opportunity to maybe turn things upside down and change. And that's where with social media, then you can tell people about the changes that you're doing. And most of all, just keep your brand alive and out there and ready, absolutely ready so that you're on the front foot at all times. So, well, thank you very much. And we'll come back to questions at the end. Thank you. Thanks very much, uh, Fernanda. So I, I know that's a, a kind of whistle stop tour uh, of uh, you know social media and the, the benefits, but um, that's kind of how we've designed this uh, uh, initial uh, session. It's really just to get you thinking um, about some of the key areas to take forward. And I'll probably say a bit more at the end. Obviously, what we want to do is take some of that and start to drill down to some of the detail on, on, on the back of this. Um, but the, um, we'll have questions at the very end for, for both our presenters today. Um, but one of the things that we thought would be really useful, and we, we always get really good feedback when we run sessions with act businesses on the ground that are, uh, you know, actually implementing uh, some of what the uh, what what we learn in in, in these sessions. So um, uh, I know you did, did one for us a, a, a few years ago, um, and I know we had some really good feedback from a, a couple of you who said there was a couple of things they did, and and it inspired them to actually um, take take a lead. To, to the, there's a business that's actually doing this. I do need to focus on on social media, and they kind of uh, transformed the way they presented themselves from from there on and in. So I'm delighted to say we've got uh, Philip Briscoe, who is uh, from uh, European Circuits, um, and uh, he's also uh, uh, delighted to say uh, one of our uh, chamber board members. But Philip's going to give us some uh, sort of a practical insight into how he's used, uh, and, and again, sort of maybe talking about some more specifics in terms of uh, some of the, the, the detail of the, the, the different social media channels. So, Philip, uh, if I can pass over to yourself now. Okay. Thanks, David. Hi, everyone. Uh, as David says, uh, well, let me just start sharing my screen first. Uh, click on there. Hopefully, everyone can see, see that. Uh, as David says, my name is Philip Briscoe. I'm the sales manager with European Circuits and the chamber uh, director for the Dumbarnshire Chamber of Commerce. So I'm going to start the session with a disclaimer and say I am not a social media expert. The information I'm, I've got in this uh, presentation is really tips and tricks and things we I've picked up over the years. Um, and I'm happy to say some of the stuff that Fenella has just said uh, we do implement. So let's start with the first slide just to tell you a little bit about us. So European Circuits, we're based in Coy Bank and we manufacture and assemble printed circuit boards. So it's a fairly niche market. We're a privately owned company and established in 1999. We're one of only two companies in Scotland to actually manufacture PCBs, so I guess that's our unique selling point, if you like. And we supply to a range of industries, including medical, broadcast, security, aerospace, throughout the UK, Europe, and beyond uh, to the Philippines, uh, South America, and various other places. Very quickly, just to tell you why we started using social media, back in 2010, 2011, we were 
uh, creating a new website. And Scottish Enterprise were uh, going to give us a small grant for doing that on the condition that we did a social media experiment. I actually said at the time, well, don't be so stupid. No one's going to be interested in us being on Facebook and Twitter and things like that because of what we do. But thankfully, I was proved wrong completely. So just a little bit about social media in general. There's hundreds of platforms out there, as Fenella said. Facebook was founded in 2004. Active users, 2.45 billion every month. Twitter, 330 million, LinkedIn, 310 million, Instagram, a billion, and Snapchat, 360 million. The reason we chose Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter was because really those were the only ones, or the main ones, around at the time we started doing social media. And to be honest, Instagram and Snapchat, they just, they're just not suited to, what, to our business at all. So the first thing I would say is you have to create a social media policy as such. And our policy is just as you see in the screen there, Facebook and Twitter, we keep it informal, fun, relaxed, and we post daft things to be honest, sometimes about the weather, nights out that we have, exhibitions we're at, staff news and any fundraising we're doing. And we've been told that um, by customers and visitors that it makes us more approachable and seem more real. LinkedIn we keep separate, both the company and individual pages, we keep them more professional and focused on what we do. So the services we offer, exhibitions and investments such as new equipment. But with all the platforms, we direct people to our website and inquiry system. That's what our call to action is, to go to the website and find out more about us. With our company, there's only one or two people who uh, are posting to the social media channel, so it's quite easy to manage. Uh, but if you have more people posting, you need to make sure that everyone is aware of what they can and can't post about. And you've got to be careful about mentioning customers. For example, we're under a lot of non-disclosure agreements, so mentioning customers could potentially be problematic for us. So looking at our Facebook page, we created that in June 2011. And as it stands at the moment, we have just over 1,200 connections. Facebook isn't the best one for us. Facebook is a business to, or um, more of a consumer, a business to consumer. We have it because it's there, it's easy to do, and it gives us a place online. It helps us with Google rankings and everything else. And it just, it's a nice, relaxed uh, platform to be on. So the next thing, a few tips that I picked up over the years for Facebook that I wanted to pass on, and they've worked for us, so hopefully they would work for you. When you're creating a business page, make sure you create a business page. Don't make a personal profile as your business page because Facebook will cotton onto that at some point and potentially close it down. So you don't want to get hundreds of followers for them to close it down. Secondly, claim your vanity URL and use it. It only takes a couple of minutes. Uh, the YouTube link, which we'll post onto the Chamber pages later, uh, that YouTube link tells you how to claim your vanity URL. So in our case, it's www.facebook.com forward slash European circuits with the Chamber of Barnetshire Chamber. But use that, use it in your email signatures on your business cards, your marketing material, that kind of thing. And add a recognizable profile photo uh, and a good cover photo make sure they fit within the dimensions requested by Facebook. If it's a company page, it makes sense to use a logo or a product or something like that. Probably the logo would be best. This is an example of uh, your radio who are no longer around, but um, this is probably not what, what not to do. They didn't claim their Facebook vanity URL, so their Facebook address was facebook.com slash your hyphen radio hyphen FM hyphen one four blah, 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 blah not particularly easy to remember. The other thing that they didn't do well was a good profile picture. And it just makes it look cheap and it just doesn't come across very professional. So make sure you do those. A few more recommendations for Facebook. Optimize the about section with information about your company and make sure they're kept up to date. As Fenella said, post regularly, tag others on your posts, use good images and video. Facebook, Twitter, uh, and I think now LinkedIn can do live video and they like live video because it keeps, it on the, keeps people on their own website for longer. They don't particularly like links to Vimeo or YouTube because it takes people away from Facebook. 
So they'll tend to promote the video pages or video posts more. Use hashtags on Facebook, uh, on all channels, but keep them relevant. Don't crash hashtags. So for example, I wouldn't put up a post on about prints and circuit boards and then crash it with, uh, I, I don't know, um, Strictly Come Dancing or I'm a Celebrity or something like that. It's just not the done thing. Schedule posts in advance. It's really easy on Facebook. And schedule posts at different times. Find out what's the best time that your audience is going to be looking at Facebook. And as Fenella said earlier on, be responsive to messages and comments. If people know that you're there, they're more likely to chat to you and interact with you on Facebook. When you're, um, the reason our logo is blue here instead of red is at the time we were doing our support the NHS thing, so the logo turned blue, but usually it's red. But make sure you ask people to, first of all, like the page, secondly, follow the page, and thirdly, see first, because that way you'll, whenever someone posts, they, that will come onto your timeline. So those are the three things that you really want to try and get people to do. So that covers Twitter, uh, Facebook. Twitter we created in October 2010. We didn't use it for a while, but uh, we use it regularly now. Uh, that's our Twitter page. And as of today, I think we have just over 1,500 connections. The benefit about Twitter is people aren't really going to follow you if they, they don't have an interest in your company. Twitter is a bit more business to business, um, but they are gonna, they'll follow you if they're interested in what you do. So a few recommendations for Twitter. Again, get your vanity URL, but you've got to be careful with this because you're limited with uh, characters. So as you'll see from the top there, our Twitter is twitter.com, European circuit. Ideally, I'd like circuits, but we couldn't get it. The Bartonshire Chamber is D Shire Chamber. So just be careful when you're doing that. Again, make sure it's a good profile picture. If it's a company page, use the logo. Add a great cover photo and make sure that they fit within the dimensions requested by Twitter. I'll, I'll get a slide later on that gives some information about that. Again, optimize the about section with information about your company and add your website. And post regularly and tag others in your posts where relevant. Again, try to use good images, video. Again, Twitter likes people likes live video as well. As with Facebook, use hashtags, keep relevant, don't crash hashtags. Follow others to encourage them to follow you, um, but keep it balanced. You don't want to be following several thousand people but only have a few followers, so try and keep, keep it well balanced. And engage with others, like, retweet, comment, and again, schedule posts in advance at the best times for your audience. I would use, there's a few sites out there, I tend to use TweetDeck for Twitter, uh, it's, it seems to be quite a good one. The trouble with Twitter is there's estimated 500 million tweets per day. So your posts are going to go down the, the, your followers' timeline very quickly. Sometimes they may, may not even be seen. But if you post regularly, don't go overboard, find a balance, but post regularly so people get to see them as often as possible. You've got to be careful and you've got to be clever. You're limited to 280 characters with, with Twitter. So don't just copy what you've posted on Facebook or LinkedIn into Twitter. You've got to adapt it a little bit and try and make it um, make sense. And remember, there's no opportunity to edit tweets. If there's a mistake in your tweet, delete it, post again. So my top Twitter tip, that's not easy to say, but top Twitter, Twitter tip if you have a long post of more than 280 characters, create a nice image and put all the information in the graphic, like we did with the Chamber Christmas lunch. So all the information about the speakers in here, but then we've got the opportunity to put some text in and the picture. And you can still tag people either in the photo or in the text, but it's a way of getting more information across without doing a whole series of tweets or uh, running out of space, that kind of thing. And on to LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a more business-to-business -business platform. And again, as of today, we have uh, just over 800 connections on our company LinkedIn page. I think on our personal link, my personal LinkedIn page is a few thousand, but on the company one, there's 822. Again, 
the risk of sounds like I'm repeating myself, create a personal profile and a business page, claim your vanity URL and use it. Uh, there's a different uh, YouTube link to how to do that. Again, we'll make that available later on. But use it, use your email, use your vanity URL on your email signatures, marketing materials, business cards, all that kind of thing. And use a professional photograph and good cover photo. Again, make sure they fit within the dimensions that are requested by LinkedIn. I put two examples at the bottom there. The one on the left, it will remain nameless, but it was someone that we were potentially interviewing a couple of years ago. And I always check, as a lot of people do, is check LinkedIn pages and things. And his uh, LinkedIn page wasn't great, no photograph um, and various other things that we'll come on to. Make sure you use this section because in here you can put a lot about the company. So here, this person's put digital adoption, adoption manager. It doesn't really give you much information. Whereas here it tells us the, what I do, my title, the company, what we do, um, as much information as you can. So we're gonna open this up a little bit just now just to see what people say. What's wrong with that photo? Does anyone want to give me, Damon, maybe you can uh, monitor anyone giving some suggestions. But does anyone want to have a guess at what personally I think is wrong with that picture? Right, yeah, people want to put their uh, comments in the chat box. Uh, I'll pick any, any up. Oh, yeah, I think I'll have a look, see if I can see the chat. Yeah. Let's... <laughs> I'm not able to see the chat at the moment. Yeah, the, well, the obvious one's come in. So uh, Renata and Joanne looking at the, the, the background. The sh there's, there's actually a shower in the background yeah. if you look closely. Uh, lighting. <laughs> yeah. Dress, T-shirt. Yeah. yeah, and the phone in his hand for one thing. You've got to bear in mind LinkedIn is like your CV. So you've got to have a good photograph on there. And when I saw that photograph, I thought, well, A, as, as people have already said, the dress code isn't great, it's a selfie, he's in a bathroom. There's all sorts of things wrong with that photograph. I'm sure he wouldn't mind me saying. So a few others to look at. Um, another tip, when you save your profile picture and your cover picture, save it as something relevant. So for example, my profile picture on LinkedIn the file name is Philip Driscoll, European Circuits, PCB Manufacturing Assembly, .jpg. The reason for that is because that's, although that's hidden in the background, Google, LinkedIn, all these, uh, all these search engines, whatever, they're looking for those keywords, PCB manufacturer. So if anyone's looking for that, that'll come up. So it'll help, you, help people find you. Keep saying it, use a professional, good headshot for your profile photo. On your personal page, use a good uh, photo of yourself. On a company page, use a logo. All these are wrong. You know, squeezed, tiny, parting. Selfie, you could possibly get away with, but not ideal. Group photo, well, who is it that I'm looking at here? So these are all bad examples. <clears throat> Last few recommendations. Sell yourself and your business. Write a good summary use as many keywords as possible, but make sure you check for grammar, typos, that kind of thing. And keep your profile updated, check it regularly, add new achievements, awards, new things that you're offering, special offers maybe. Now there's two schools of thought here when connecting with people. First thing I would say is when you want to connect with someone, personalize it with a message. One of my pet hates is when you just receive a connection request and you have no idea who it is. So personalize it with a message, say, oh, we met at such and such, I'd love to connect with you. My rule of thumb is I connect with people that I've spoken to or I've met. Um, some people say connect with everybody. It's, it's your choice, really. Um, as I say, I just tend to stick with people I've met or I've spoken to. And use LinkedIn as a search engine. Search for people in your industry. So for example, in my case, if I search for PCB designers, I'll get a list of people that have that job title. I can um, possibly make contact with them uh, through LinkedIn or an email or whatever. If you look at their profile page, the other thing is, uh, if you look at their profile page, they also see that you've looked at their profile page, so that might create a conversation. 
And as with Twitter and Facebook, use hashtags, again, keep them relevant. And make sure you interact with the comment, uh, make sure you interact with other posts, comment, like, share, that kind of thing. So this is probably, the next slide is probably a slide that um, is probably useful, but um, maybe PR agencies don't like is using it. I mean, my recommendation is Canva. Um, and that's some information about the ideal profile photo for Twitter, uh, header image, same with Facebook, same with LinkedIn. So these are all quite handy, but Canva is a really good website for manipulating photos and uh, creating images and that kind of thing. And that's a quick scan through of some recommendations from my point of view. Again, it's not um, that these are just opinions from my side of things um, and what we've done in the past, but it certainly helped us generate business, certainly help people go to our website and our inquiry form. Um, it's very difficult to measure exactly how much, but it's definitely helped us. And why wouldn't you be on there when there's so many, so many others on there that could potentially be interested in what you do? Thanks very much for that, that Philip. Uh, no, that was uh, re really interesting. As I say, I, I think it's always really useful to see how uh, businesses, because uh, we, you know, we, we haven't all got uh, the, the big budgets that some of the bigger companies have got to. Uh, we, uh, Vanello and I were talking about this uh, before. You know, some some have uh, you know full time employees with a, a digital officer on, on in place. Uh, some can afford a, a bit of support from the, the likes of Vanella, uh, but um, Obviously, smaller businesses uh, uh, need to find time within their their, their existing uh, sort of uh, day to, to to do this. So it's really useful to um, uh, focus on, on on the things that you can do practically as a business. Um, and I guess it's uh, also useful to to mention that Philip, you know, as uh, from his business, uh, they are very um, accessible in terms of being able to supply. So I know for a fact he's got international clients, if, if anyone's in that area. Uh, and obviously the, the beauty of social media and the web is, is, is being able to reach a, a much wider audience than, than you might be able to. And people, particularly after this uh, uh, crisis, are not always going to be as, looking as close to home as, as they were. So there's some really good messages in there. Before we move on to the questions, I'd like to pick out. So the one from me, because uh, it's my background, um, is very much, uh, you know, remember this is your brand and remember you should treat, you know, your, 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 your social media just as importantly as you treat, treat everything else uh, uh, in terms of how you present your, your business. So um, that's, that's one thing to, to say. Um, I think the competition is higher now for better quality images, better posts, uh, and because people are more used to it. So, you know, take, I think Fanella mentioned uh, quite, quite a bit of that uh, uh, as well, um, as did, I think Philip highlighted that as well. Um, two big things, uh, I think, are, that are coming out of this. It's an absolutely key, or the, these channels are an absolutely key way of you being able to tell your story. And then I think what came out of it, you guys didn't, you, you sort of talked about it, but you know, it's, it's the communication. It, it's actually building a relationship with your audience and with your, your markets that, you know, people are always struggling to, uh, you know, find a way of, the, they always talk about USPs and the USP are, you know, is, is, is the individual and, and, and maybe the brand and the way that you uh, engage with your, your audiences. So it's a really powerful, they're really powerful tools if you can use them properly um as i said this is just really to get get people thinking and there's loads there that uh i've i've started thinking about in terms of um other things even even to the extent of people being able to uh you know create templates the right templates and, and maybe I, i'm actually in contact with one of the canvas specialists at the moment so um you know, you will still need, you know, some business will still need sort of uh, the, the, the support of a, a specialist. And, and, and also to remember, that's not always a full, you know, it's not a full but full time position. You might need someone like Fenella to, to help get you started and, and help you, you create that plan. And that's a really important part of what we've been trying to communicate to businesses as well in terms of the strongest ones are going to be those that plan well, identify their audiences and find the best way to communicate with them. 
uh, and I have put a few uh, notes in the in the chat as well. You know, social media is a great you know tool because it's not like printing a brochure and thinking, oh, I've got that wrong. I wish I'd done that different. You can, you know, I think there is a, 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 a I think as Fenella picked up, there is an opportunity to experiment, to to try different things and see what works, which is absolutely brilliant. You know, going back in the day, you you, you threw everything uh, in, in, into one channel and and uh, you know with with the best possible information but sometimes if it didn't work it was a very expensive um you know uh, exercise so i think that, that if you remember one thing it's, uh, it's about relationships and telling your story um and before we move, move on to the questions i think it's really important in terms of that one size doesn't fit all you know some things will work for some businesses i know there's uh, jan here, here who runs her yoga business who uses it not not so much social media but for for the practical exercises of, of telling people when classes are on and checking who's coming and keeping that relationship going on a, a I think Fennell had mentioned that it's a, it's a good contact uh, almost like a customer relationship management system sort of thing so so that can work really well uh, in, in in that sphere whereas you know if you're looking at a much broader audience you know it's, it's things like Twitter and LinkedIn are going to get you that exposure for those types of businesses um, and then the other things I wanted to pick up were, especially at the moment, you know, the, this idea of positioning and businesses. Uh, again, these were touched on. Fenella talked about being sensitive. And we had one of our planning workshops was talking about moving away from selling, uh, which sounds ridiculous for a business. But, you know, people are, are fed up of, you know, unless you're being looking for, uh, I don't know, a, a tile or something, you know, pe people don't want to be sold to. They want, want to engage with you. They want to... Uh, you know, f f be told that you're solving a solution and, and that they want to work with you for different reasons, not just necessarily because you're cheapest sort of thing. But it might be that you've communicated quality or people are giving you reviews or, or talking about your customer service type things. So again, it's that other way of engaging with audiences that then give you that credibility through their own interaction and their comments. So I think one thing we didn't just very touched on briefly there was you know reviews and and, and the like and I think there's a question in the uh, box that we'll come to that uh, is, is maybe the the, the the downside of that um, so I think that was that the, there's some of the things I wanted to highlight and, and just one sort of practical thing when you're putting uh, so uh, Philip had, had talked about SEO there um, and uh, putting uh, your title in, in the image one trick for that uh, uh, search engines pick up words that are separated with dashes I checked it with Jason there um, who's, who's our IT uh, e expert and if you put a dash uh, between the words it'll tend to pick up the words uh, better than if it's uh, sort of spaces sort of thing so um, uh, so it's, it's about separating multiple keywords uh, in, in that way so uh, I think on that note um, we'll we'll open up to to the questions I'll just scroll back and see uh, I think was it Joanne who if, if, see if we can get an answer for you or whether it's something we need to, to take off offline is Joanne still here or not um, just shout if you are and she's been disconnected then. All right, okay, we've lost, lost Joanne. Uh, I'll ask the question because it's, it's, it's a valid one. Maybe go to Fenella. Um, have you had an experience of um, dealing with um, negative reviews or things that you think are unfair sort of thing? I think, I think it's a really valid point and it's about how you, you know, deal with customers so that you don't get that. So if I could get you to answer that question because I think it's a we, we kind of talk about the positives, but there are probably negatives that we want to help people avoid. Yeah, no, absolutely. I have had um, clients with, with negative reviews. Um, one, the, you can't actually delete, as far, I haven't found a way yet to delete reviews on Facebook in particular. That's really the only place you, you can put reviews in. Um, but you, so they did, they ended up removing their reviews completely, which I wouldn't say necessarily is the best thing. The be, if you have got a negative review, try and then hide it by getting some good reviews afterwards. So then go out to other customers and say, please can you review us? Because then they'll drop down. If you get a negative, we get, I've had clients with negative um, uh, comments, either comments or it's messages to us, which will, obviously some of them can be seen. As I said, the best thing is don't stay silent. Answer them and take them offline. Anything, just take them away from social media so that you're not conducting the whole conversation in front of other people. Um, so yeah, the review thing, I would just get it, try and hide it as quickly as possible. 
um, and, um, and try and get good reviews. The more good reviews up, the stars will become better. You'll get more stars. So that is the best way you can do it. But then at least they're genuine. And a lot of people will just rant for the sake of rant, ranting. Yeah. So don't take it get over personally. Uh, great. No, that's a good answer. And I, I think the other good thing these days is people know that there's, you know, be, uh, as long as you've got an overwhelming sort of positive reviews, they, they know there's, a, there's always a ranter out there and people that will, will sort of uh, you know post a negative review because that's the type of person they 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 might be sort of thing so uh no that's good um and uh we've got a uh question from danessa maybe on on on, on we haven't lost danessa there she is no. uh, maybe i'll unmute you to ask your your question i guess this is probably well start start, start with vanilla first uh i think on this, on this one please oh just sorry just unmute you Vanessa, so we're having a problem on me. There you are. You're, you're there. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Thank you, um, Fenella. It was more to do with I'm in a specialist industry, which is um, architectural and building consultancy, and uh, so uh, very f we're quite an old-fashioned industry. Very few people actually use LinkedIn. Um, I've also noticed that the ones that do, it's kind of falls flat. It's kind of you know almost like you're um, father trying to um, be in with the kids and they put the wrong thing up. Um, what I would like to do and what I think is more interesting um, and more useful to people, because I don't think it necessarily generate business directly, is to put up some blog, technical blogs which demonstrate the difference between um, what we do and what other competitors do. Um, and what extra we can give. It's just a way of getting that across because I find it very difficult to get across other ways. I'm wondering if there's a best way to tackle that using presumably LinkedIn in a sort of targeted way. Um, yeah, what I would suggest on a, on a blog situation, um, the best thing is actually to put a blog up on your, on your website, have a news on your, on your website, and then you link your website because then at least people will be going back to your website. And then you can put it up on LinkedIn. You know, you just you, you share that, and then you can share it across Twitter um, and any other platforms as well. Um, to Sorry, I was I was thinking. I mentioned blog. I was also thinking about videoing. Um, so for a video of a site and what we've learned from a particular site or an issue, things like that. Yeah, I mean, again, you you could do it as a. As a post, um, I, 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 Philip may know this better with with using LinkedIn more. But um, what you would actually doing the the the, the video, it, I don't think you can put it straight onto LinkedIn. You have to link it to it. Um, or I think you may be able to do a chat, Philip. Do you know better on this one? Oh, I think Facebook, uh, uh, Facebook, have, or sorry, LinkedIn has just released link LinkedIn Live, I think, or something like that, where you can do live video, like you can do Facebook Live. But I don't know if it's open to everyone just yet. Someone mentioned I saw that webinar a few weeks ago. So I think it's going out to everyone. But in terms of uh, blogs and blogs, I would, just as Fenella says, I would put them onto um, your own website because really what you're wanting to use social media for is direct getting people to your website to see your other pages, your other the other things that you do. But the, th the other thing you've got to bear in mind is, you, I think you mentioned, Denise, about the, the industry being an old industry. There's going to be new people coming into that industry, and as they come in, they will definitely be using LinkedIn. Yeah, Twitter, exactly. And, and Facebook to some extent. As I said during my presentation, we Facebook for us isn't particularly a great source, but it's there. And it's um, and it's easy to use, so why not take advantage of it? That's great. Well, that's some, Thank you. Some, some good answers there. I, I might try and get Jason actually here if I have not misremembered this, because I, there's also, if I'm not mistaken, the opportunity to put articles up on LinkedIn. That was part of uh, a recent presentation. So. Uh, uh, Jason, was it you that had had some success with that? Yes, yeah, so I use a feature within LinkedIn called LinkedIn Articles. Um, it gives the opportunity for more long form, what I would say long form content. So if you had a more detailed 
article that you wanted to feature within LinkedIn, you could use that feature for, for more detailed write-ups. Um, and you can use them um, and illustrate them with nice graphics or images as well. You can use uh, block quotes too. So you're breaking up a, a longer form type of content. Now, what I would normally do, uh, kind of, I've got a new strategy that I'm going to be implementing over the next uh, few weeks, is doing an introductory video that's no more than 30 seconds to introduce a particular subject. It might be how to optimize your home broadband whilst working from home. It's, it's a fairly boring subject. If I have a little introduction that just introduces me, introduces what I'm going to talk about, and then it's linked to something, a blog on my website, or a LinkedIn article with more information, um, then that's, that's the approach that I'm going to be taking, just short video snippets, which you can upload to a LinkedIn post just to introduce a concept or something that I want to talk about in more detail or engage an audience with. So, uh, but I found LinkedIn articles particularly useful as kind of a journal throughout lockdown and how, how we manage our workload um, throughout the, uh, the, you know, the, the first few weeks of the lockdown period. So. I have found it quite useful. Fantastic. Thanks for that, Jason. And you, uh, I'm glad I remembered that correctly. Um, and uh, no, that's really useful. And Jason's one of our other, other uh, Together for Business champions. He's, he's uh, done some brilliant uh, presentations and support on, on Zoom and, and, and IT side of things. Um, and also, I think, I think we discussed this at the time as well. The great thing about, you know, say if you're creating a blog is you can use it, you know, on multiple channels. You know, once you've done the work, it can be, you know, uh, used really smartly to, to, you know, it's a cut and paste job quite often uh, and a bit of tweaking. Um, and again, when we're talking about videos and how much more important they've become these days, uh, again, you know, you wouldn't host a video on your website because it uses up a load of broadband and slows your, your website down, but you'd, you'd create your own, uh, you know, YouTube channel or Vimeo channel, which has its own um, SEO and it helps you create that, uh, uh, you know, digital footprint um, as well. So, so there's a lot of things that you can do quite smartly. Again, we're quite keen with the small businesses to, to help them work sort of smarter <laughs> rather than, than harder. So hopefully that, that answers your, 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 your question there. Um, I'm just going to check was there uh, is there anyone else who's got uh you want to stick your hand up virtually or or in your in your in your sort of uh, uh on, on your screen that's got any sort of questions i'd like to to put to the guys uh, i know we had a couple emailed in beforehand so was there anyone uh actually one one uh, sorry I, I just won't click off my screen but someone had uh, talked about how you sort of um you know, measure and, and, and look at, you know, return on investment and, and what have you. Because I think that's, you know, again, with particularly where, you know, well, no, no business wants to waste resource. So it is about establishing the best channel and the best use of your time. So I don't know if I could, I know you've got some thoughts on, on that, Philal, about, you know, you had mentioned sort of tracking and, and what have you, but um, uh, maybe just sort of uh, expanding slightly on that. Yeah, um, what I'd say about that, the easiest way to do it um, is, is to go onto your insights um, uh, on Facebook. It's along, along the top, you'll see insights. Then you can go in and you can see the last month and you can see all the posts, how they've done. You can analyze in when are the good times. I didn't mention about timing of posts, um, but I generally I would say for Facebook, you post between 11 o'clock in the morning and nine at night. Um, and, um, but you, you'll be able to see the curve of when the good times to do that is um, a very good, very good times happen to be weekend evenings are very good, are very high usage times. Um, lunch times are often very good as well. Uh, although at the moment that's slightly changed because everybody can be on it at any time. But um, so, but that's so the insights will tell you what's good. That's a very quick and easy way. And on Twitter, it's analytics. Um, there are measurement tools you can get that do it, but you have to pay for them and they're much more complicated. I've never actually used them, so I haven't give, can't give you direct experience of that. But the best way is looking at which posts do well. You can see it very easily, as I've showed you on some of my things. It has comments, reactions, you know, very quickly. You can see the ones that do well. And if you see that there's loads of people who've commented, just your friends, then that maybe hasn't done as well as you wanted it to do. So see who is it that's actually commenting or engaging. And that, to, in my mind and with my experience, that has worked well, just actually just looking on the insight side and, and seeing what what works there um, and and then you know and we've done it we've we've duplicated some certain posts done similar ones again and they've worked well and then the ones that haven't done well 
we've taken on. Great, no, that's, uh, that's good. Uh, and I also know that uh, when you, and, and again, you know, we have to recognize that these guys are in it to make money. Um, so, you know, the, 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 of course, you know, they want as many people using these uh, platforms as possible. But, you know, the, the, the reason they were set up was so they can, you know, as they've done very surreptitiously um, over time, uh, have you, you are, the, the sponsored links are the ones that you see more than others. Uh, and so what obviously Facebook have in, in particular have done, uh, people have noticed you, 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 it's not as easy to get seen uh, these days because they want you to spend money. But the, the upside of smelling, even spending small amounts of money is that they give you a very good you know, track uh, on the, the return on investment as well because they want you to, you know, they want to show you that you've um, benefited from, from investing that. I, I don't know, I, I, I might put you on the spot here, Jason, but have you um, sort of had much ex uh, sort of practical experience of, of sort of tracking um, effectiveness of your sort of activity? Um, I use um, a service called Hootsuite, um, albeit, um, I've been so busy during the lockdown period with what we do that um, my marketing has been um, put on hold just for a short period of time whilst I catch up. Um, but we use Hootsuite for, for scheduling and um, I use Twitter analytics um, to measure effectiveness of, of tweets in particular. Um, I, I also use Google Analytics as well um, to actually, and webmaster tools to track um, links back to our website and I know which blogs are more effective than others and how many times they've actually been visited. So I use a, a combination of measurement tools to, to measure effectiveness. Um, and I, I'm, I'm normally looking at that on a weekly basis once I've posted something new on LinkedIn uh, or, or on any of our other um, social media platforms. That's great. So uh, I think there's a, a lesson there as well. So, uh, you know, speak to your, your web developers and web experts as well uh, to make sure that you can actually track the effectiveness because you can usually see where the, the leads have come from uh, on, on that front. And quick, uh, I've got a quick question, David. I don't know if Vanilla uh, can answer this one, but I, I was always told, or confirm it, I was always told you don't really promote posts that are doing well promote posts that aren't doing well, if that makes sense. Is that right? Um, that's a mixture. If they're not doing well, they might not be. You, you sometimes people say post, uh, have, leave the post up for 12 hours before you boost it. Um, some people say you should just do ads and don't do boosting. Now I've done a mixture of everything. So um, I would tend to boost the ones that you really think, um, if they are doing well, I mean, I, I, I don't know whether you know, you all know about the, the algorithms at Facebook. If you put it out, it'll show it to say, uh, for instance, 20 people. I'm to giving out an example. Then if one person likes it, it might go to 30. Then if five people make a comment, it'll go to 300. So it goes up, it builds up. That, and Facebook has these algorithms, which uh, love them or like, hate them, they're there. That's what happens. But um, with the, the boosting of posts, um, I would tend to boost something that is very worthwhile, that is, really good, is a really good um, boost. If you're just boosting something that's saying, oh, well, didn't we all have a great time out and a uh, staff party? That's not really going to gain you anything. It's, you want to boost things that are going to gain people to go to, usually what you're aiming is to gain them to go to your website or maybe it's gaining to, to buy something um, and therefore you want them to, to get to your landing page. And I would boost those sort of posts more. If you've got a limited amount of money, boost the ones that you know the answer is what you want. You boost that one, as it were. Um, I don't know if that helps. No, that's great. Thanks very much. Great. Thank you very much for that. So um, uh, I don't know if I've missed any other questions in the in the chat or not. Is there anyone want to, uh, got any more questions? Uh, I know Shona had uh, made a really useful comment in terms of when I mentioned LinkedIn articles. Um, I didn't realize that you can only publish that on your uh, personal page rather than your business page. So uh, that's maybe something to, to bear in mind. Uh, do you want to just tell us a wee bit? About that show. Yeah, I was trying to use them. I was trying to work out if the LinkedIn articles would be better than blogs, but I could only do it from my page and not from my from my own page, not my company page, which then makes it harder to track on it. Whereas the company page, you got all the analytics behind it, okay. um, so you don't get quite as much in your personal page. So, okay. yeah, that was a bit. So what I do now is I just tell a wee bit about the blog and put the link in the comments. 
and put them to my web page. Great. It's always useful to have uh, you know personal practical experience brought to, to these things. So 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 thanks guys. Um, so uh, unless there's uh, anything else, I think we'll uh, sort of draw draw that to close. But ho hopefully that sort of uh, just reminded people, if if nothing else, to you know the importance and the value and the the opportunities at this time in particular. I don't want to sound you know uh, you know as if we're taking advantage. It's it's more about some of the messages that we've been talking about there, which which are you know being sensitive, being shown to be uh, you know not 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 over salesy at, at this point, and to um, focus on the right messages and relevant messages, and identify the right markets, and then choosing the right communication uh, to to access those markets is is, is the absolute crux of, of all this. And I've generated loads of ideas there to help us start to drill down to some of the specifics here that I think will help people. You know, it's, it's maybe just really simple things like how do we you know, help people create the right profile picture? How, you know, there might be uh, well, definitely one we want to do is, is help people uh, creating videos because <laughs> that's something that I know I, I hate and don't really do. But um, I'm glad some people are picking up on it. It's uh, unfortunately a necessary evil. These, these days uh, and uh, the opportunity here is to, you know, whilst some businesses are furloughed um, and, and others have been very inactive, there's an opportunity here for, even though some businesses are a, 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 a difficult position, if we can come out of this, uh, you know, you can come out of this in a, a stronger position than your, your competition. And I think I'd put in the chat as well, one of the fantastic things about a lot of the social media is you can take what the competition have done well and use it for your own purposes instead of you know using up a lot of your time. You can see what posts they're doing well, adapt it for your own purposes, and you'll be keep competing head to head with that. So um, I'd, I'd really like to thank uh, both both our presenters today, Fenella and Philip, for a really nicely balanced introduction to to the value of social media at this time. So um, Jim, I, sorry, Jim. Can I just add? Um, if anybody does have any questions specific to their own business and wants to ask me, I am offering a free hour of social media tips and advice at the moment um, for any company. So do just contact me direct um, if, if you like that. And, and if there is any specific that you didn't want to bring up here, I'm, I'm very happy to help with that if it's any use. Yeah. Thanks, thanks for reminding me. Uh, I knew I was going to meant, meant to mention something. So, so uh, uh, Fenella's come on board as well, another of our chain bin champions, which is you know fantastic. Uh, along with a, a few of you here uh, to help support businesses uh, through this this period, and you'll see on our Together for Business uh, hub on the website. There's uh, you can uh, more than happy to come through the chamber if anyone wants me to to sort of uh, connect you with any of our uh, experts to provide that support. So uh, that's really really, really useful. Uh, uh, as well. Um, what I should do, there's a couple of things we need to do before we finish. So uh, I just need to try and remember what we've got coming up. Um, I think we've, so we're, we're starting to reintroduce networking to our diary, having sort of uh, been, you know, battling with grants and uh, uh, HR and all these new words like furlough and uh, the new normal and, and everything. Uh, we've We've very much been trying to support businesses through this, and now that we're sort of look, looking towards that new normal, we're we're getting back to the the networking. So I'd really appreciate it if people would help support our uh, sort of reintroduced uh, sessions. I think we're going to try and run those on at the moment Tuesdays at nine thirty. So come along, share your um, experiences, uh, make new connections, make, keep yourself connected to the ones that you know. Um, and you will certainly send you information about those and we're going to try and structure them as well so I might steal one of our other um, titles which was uh, 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 from the pivoting with purpose session we, we might have networking with purpose because we do you know people there's so many you know webinars and and, and networking opportunities about out there I think the thing we need to do is make sure it's of really good value to the people so they're learning something and sharing ideas through through those sessions uh, the other one we'll be having is, I think, if I've got the time right, we're trying to continue with the business support. So uh, it it may not be loads of people, but you know, if, if you need any sort of support and advice, I was chatting to Fennell about maybe nipping along next week, next Thursday. Uh, I think it's about, uh, I think it's at two o'clock, uh, and. Um, 
just getting some advice that we maybe not covered in this because we've just scratched the surface. So, you know, it's different for the different businesses and to have that sort of almost sort of uh, surgery type session, I think is still really important. So we're, we're going to continue with those while we're, we're trying to sort of get, get through this. Uh, the other one we've got is we're going to try and do these weekly information uh, sort of sessions, not knowledge transfer. So We've got, again, along the re-emerging economy, we're, we're looking at uh, helping businesses get back to work, uh, probably look at some of the, the, the HR and preparation that they'll need to, to look at, as well as maybe some sort of uh, uh, HR issues with absenteeism. So maybe speak to, uh, again, Lucinda's been really helpful with some of that in, in the past, so it might, might be something we get, get you involved with. So if you've got, got those sort of issues, then uh, please join us there. Uh, and finally, have I forgotten anything else, Philip, apart from the photograph? Uh, we'll do the photograph, but just one, obviously, after doing an um, event on social media, if you don't already like the Chamber pages, please go and like the Facebook Chamber, uh, the Chamber Facebook, Chamber Twitter, and LinkedIn, please. Right. And use our Together for Business hashtag because we're going to try and build a bit of momentum for that to, to keep our community uh, building together in, in the future. So what, what I'll do is we, we always like to get a wee snapshot for our own social media purposes. So I can maybe get people to uh, do a thumbs up or affirmation or whatever you want to do as a, as a result of this. So we'll take a quick picture. Are you ready, Philip? Yep, three, two, one. Thank you. Managed to get my thumb out of the shot there, uh, but uh, there you go. That's, so, so thank you again for uh, joining us, uh, and thanks to our, our speakers. Um, and uh, we hope to see it at uh, uh, future events. Thank you so much.